What's up, everybody? Jason from Tastes Like Music here, coming at you solo today. Uh, this is the first video I'm recording in 2024. We've had some videos coming out, but they were recorded prior to the new year. Very excited for the year ahead. I think it's going to be a big year for the channel, a lot of changes. Of course, our first full year without Crams are in the fold. If you don't know, Crams are has left the channel. We've announced Aww. it a few times in a few videos, but still getting comments on almost every video asking where he is. So this will be the last time I say it on camera. Uh, but going forward, just me and Joe. We'll probably have some guests on from time to time. We won't be the only faces you see. Uh, but we will be the the main ones. Uh, Joe and I have been doing a lot of talking about the, the channel and what we want to turn it into, and I think there'll be some changes. Chiefly among them, I think more new reviews uh, is a big thing. I think that's been like a, a New Year's re resolution almost every year on the channel is we want to do more reviews, we want to do more reviews. It's just been difficult with the amount of time needed to be put in and all the other stuff we're doing on the channel, but we're really... Uh, kind of shifting focus uh, towards that, making that a big priority. In the past, I think we've maybe waited uh, for the bigger releases to review those, stuff that we would all be listening to that we could review together. But I think we're going to kind of split up the work a little and just review whatever we feel like talking about. It'll be less about uh, doing the big releases and, and shooting for views and more about uh, kind of tipping off you guys, the audience, uh, to the, whatever we're into at the moment. So, uh, decent chance this video only gets maybe a couple hundred views. Uh, if you want to help offset that and you're interested in reviews, uh, hit the subscribe button. Uh, that would be a big help. Uh, well, without any further ado, let's get into the record. I'm talking about a record called Cacophony by the band Gumshoes. It's a concept record about a band called Cacophony. So if you hear me throughout the review mentioning the band Cacophony, that is not the artist that made the record. This is by the band Gumshoes. Uh, this is the project of one Sam Sparks. Uh, he self-described the project as homespun indie pop about eccentrics, losers, and fools. This is the third full length. There's a couple EPs as well. Uh, been releasing stuff since 2022, I think was the first uh, full length. So been putting stuff out pretty uh, frequently. And like I said, this is a concept record about an eight-piece DIY punk band called Cacophony, not to be confused with the real uh, Marty Friedman, Jason Becker metal band Cacophony. So it's an eight-piece band. We get eight tracks on the record. There's one track focusing on each different member of the band, and those tracks kind of dig into each member's psyche, their motivations, their frustrations, and, and just how they feel about, you know, being in a punk band, being in the, a scene. Uh, I believe it says that this record takes place in 1996, so this is post-Nirvana, and they feel like they're the only band that didn't get uh, swept up by a major label. Uh, they're still kind of roughing it in the trenches. Uh, funnily enough, the first track on the record is a song about the tambourine player in the band. Going into this record, I had never heard of this artist before, so the first thing I noticed was a vocal similarity to Paul Banks of Interpol, which briefly tricked me into thinking that this uh, record was going to, going to be more of a post-punk type of thing, uh, but it is definitely not. But this first track, the most post-punk-y of them, uh, definitely some Interpol vibes on this one, despite uh, all the piano going on. The second track is called The Real Thing, and this track is about the bass player. Uh, this is when I immediately like realized that my post-punk expectations were off. You've got this nice uh, piano, glockenspiel, melodic hook happening, very upbeat. Lyrically, it's probably my favorite track on the record. It's about the, the bass player hearing this disco song and kind of realizing that he likes disco a little bit. Um, I like the, the verse that says, Disco died, and I was never on its side, but this awful song, now I love it so much I could cry. It's kind of about this like softening of, of his punk rock uh, ethos, credentials, whatever you want to call it. And allowing himself to like more things as he gets older. We, you know, as we get older, we get less entrenched in that one specific scene. Track three on the record is called Claire de Lune 2. This is the song about the keyboard player of Cacophony. This track really sounds like Paul Banks fronting Bell and Sebastian. Lyrically, the song's about this uh, classically trained piano player who's become radicalized, is in this band Cacophony, and 
is dreaming of, you know, creating a revolution through classical music and uh, putting out a song called Claire de Lune 2 that just really riles everybody up. Track four is called One Fine Specimen, which is about a theremin player. And of course, the theremin player is this, this track about this person who just wants to be weird, who, who you know, kind of derives pleasure from being an outcast. And the song takes place, they're like out in this field asking to be abducted by aliens. Track four Five is a track called Nobody's about the lead guitar player, really fast, um, upbeat pop tune, really reminds me of Dev Hines' Lightspeed Champion project, uh, which is what he was doing before he, he kind of went off and did uh, Blood Orange. Uh, track six, a little bit different, got a little bit of a jazzy samba feel. This is a song about the sax player in the band. Uh, you've also got these little cheap Casio keyboard type of sounds going on in the background. Track 7 is called The Puppet Waltz. Uh, this is about the singer of the band and the fact that the singer is a ventriloquist, punk rock singer who uses a sock puppet to sing through. So that's this point in the record when you realize that this band cacophony that is being described on this record is Joe's absolute nightmare band. And then the record closes with The Last Living Kennedy, a song about the drummer, who's an old veteran of the scene, and he's considering selling out uh, on this track. It's a really strong, infectious closer uh, with this like fast, almost sequencer-esque type piano part. Overall, lyrically, aside from a couple tracks, I think this record leaves me wanting a little bit more. I think the idea and the general concept is such a juicy one that so much more could have been done with. Each one of these songs is just like a little kind of character sketch that kind of draws a picture of like different types of people within a scene, which is cool, but I think a lot more could have been done with story. I think having these ideas intersect at some point uh, in the record could have made it very interesting. Having some conflict between these people could have been interesting. And instead, each track is very segmented. That said, though, I think musically there's still a lot of good stuff going on. Very catchy, very fun, very good arrangements for uh, what seems to be a single person making this record, kind of a bedroom pop type of thing. I think it's produced very well. There's a very... uh, aughts vibe to this. If the aughts were your decade, then I think this is a record that you will probably enjoy quite a bit. Um, Like I said, there's Interpol that I hear in the vocals mostly, uh, kind of Bell and Sebastian, but also other stuff like uh, I hear some Arcade Fire in there for sure. I hear some Fan Farlo, maybe even a little Sandra Lurke uh, in some of the melodies. It's it's pretty cool. I I think, you know, I'm going 3.5 on it, three and a half stars. Uh, a high three and a half. I think it's pretty close to four for me. I think there's a little bit of an idea of people who watch this channel that when we give things 3.5 that it's pretty much not really worth checking out. Um, But 3.5 is good. I've heard six records this year. This is my favorite one so far. I don't think that it's something you'll see at the end of the year on my favorite albums list. But it's early January. There's not a ton to listen to. If you're looking for something to dig into, and get the year started. I think this is a great option. Definitely interested to see where this project goes in the future. I think there's a lot of potential here. I think this is a a talented musician and songwriter in Sam Sparks. So yeah, uh, good record. Check it out. Uh, Let us know what you think in the comments. Hit the like button. And like I said, if you watch this channel even semi-regularly and aren't subscribed yet, please uh, consider subscribing. Check the video description for links to our social media and Patreon, and we'll see you in the next one.